Let's bring in Carl Rove, Fox News contributor, served as senior advisor and deputy chief of staff to President George W. Bush. You see all those, those pictures, Carl. What comes to mind? Do you have a message for America? Well, I was honored when I served in the White House to attend the ceremony each Memorial Day at Arlington, and it's one of the most moving moments that you could ever imagine. And uh, I can't begin the day without thinking of the many families that I met during my seven, nearly seven years in the White House who had given it of their own to serve our country. And um, God bless our country. God bless those who don the uniform of our country and the families that support them in doing so. It's a remarkable day to remember so many people. And you were on that job, Carl, at a time of war, too, which adds so much mm -hmm. more weight to it as well. You're a patriot. Uh, we're, we're also talking about the reopening of our country as we face COVID-19. And, Carl, the Health and Human Service Secretary, Alex Azar, was on Sunday Morning Futures yesterday talking about reopening and how we do it. Here's what he had to say. Thanks to President Trump's and the, our governor's historic response to this, we have to and we can get back to work, to school, to community, to engagement, um, because it's not an issue of health versus our economy. It's actually an issue of health versus health. By being locked up in our homes, um, there's very real health consequences. We have hundreds of thousands of fewer cancer screenings and treatments going on. We have less preventive services. Those are real, discernible, immediate health consequences that have to be considered just as much as the spread of this disease has to be considered. Carl, the president has said many times the cure can't be worse than the virus. Are we at a point where the lockdown, especially in some of these Democrat states where it's going on and on indefinitely, is just making the problem worse? Well, I thought uh, Secretary Azar made a powerful point. I saw a chart last week of the decline in uh, so-called elective procedures. 18 percent fewer cancer treatments. Think about that for a moment. Yes, we ought to be concerned about COVID-19. We've got to take precautions. We've got to wear masks. We've got to be engaged in social distancing. We have to wash our hands frequently. And we have to return our country to a place where we go back to work, where people are able to go to see their doctor, where they go to see, it, where they go get uh, procedures that they need, and where we begin to uh, uh, restore the ability of families to take care of themselves and provide for their, for their future. And um, I thought the secretary did an excellent job of pointing out that, that if we're smart about it and we we practice safe practices, that we can begin to return the country to as close to normality as COVID-19 is going to allow us to do so. Of course, Carl, you're there in Austin, Texas, and uh, Governor Greg Abbott tweeted this out about the reopening in your state. Texas is opening safe, smart, and strong which prompted former Congressman Beto O'Rourke to respond to the governor with this one. Dangerous, dumb, and weak. The pandemic is very political now, isn't it? Yeah. I, at first, I was a little confused. I thought he might be tweeting out his own personal uh, <laughs> motto. Uh, look, look, let's talk about Texas just for a second. The number of cases Please. and deaths are trending down. The deaths per capita in the United in Texas are among the lowest in the United States. We're the second most populous state with 29 million people, and we have one of the lowest per capita uh, death rates in the country. Hospitalizations are steady. We have 1,572 people in our hospitals, and with thousands, thousands of available beds. So we're we're doing a good job of monitor of doing this. Our, our bed capacity is enormous. Our testing continues to ramp up. We have tested 886,000 people as of Sunday, or excuse me, as of Saturday, out of 29 million. That means one out of every 33 Texans has already been tested, and the numbers continue to go up. Now, what does that really mean? Let me give you a comparison. And I don't mean to pick on. Pennsylvania, but it's got about it's got less than half the people in Texas. We have 56,000 cases in Texas. We've had 1,533 deaths, unfortunately. God bless the, each and every one of them. 13 people on Sunday. Pennsylvania, which is locked down and locked down and locked down, has 71,656 cases, despite the fact it's less than half the population of Texas, 5,145 deaths and 28 people on Sunday. So, look, we're in Texas. Uh, D D D Governor Abbott is right. We're treating it safe, smart, and strong. And I thought it was a cheap shot by Robert Francis O'Rourke to, to, to take after the governor. In, in Mr. O'Rourke's own message, he said, stay home if you can and wear a mask. Well, guess what? That's exactly the message of our governor. If you don't need to go out, stay at home. And whenever you go out, 
about when you go to work, when you go to the store, whenever you move around the community, wear a mask and maintain social distancing. But, you know, Mr. O'Rourke lost a race for the Senate. He 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 just devastated himself in a race for for the United States presidency. My sense is he's getting ready to run for governor in a couple of years. So he's taking cheap shots whenever and wherever he can. I'd say be safe, smart and strong and stop saying dangerous, dumb and weak things. Well, uh, as Joe Biden is defending his comments or facing a lot of backlash about the um, comments on black voters, you have Elizabeth Warren who says she's going to reportedly host a high dollar fundraiser for Biden. But who can forget what she said last year over and over and over again? Listen to this. Billionaires in wine caves should not pick the next president of the United States. Mr. May no to the billionaires. No to the billionaires, whether they are self-funding or whether they're funding PACs. We are the Democratic Party, and that's the party of the people. Get rid of super PACs and secret spending by the billionaires and break the big donor stranglehold. Carl, what's your reaction? Well, let's be honest. She didn't mean it when she said those things. After all, she'd run for the U.S. Senate a couple of years before Massachusetts, had big dollar fundraisers, had various money from people who had PACs, took that money and transferred into her presidential campaign where she was making these proclamations of campaign, you know, uh, purity. And, uh, and then she started or allowed to have started and defended having her own super PAC. So she didn't mean those things. We should know that Elizabeth Warren is, is willing to say one thing and do another. And so we're going we're gonna to see it now. And look, let's, let's have a list of all of the big donors who are on the Elizabeth Warren uh, fundraiser for Joe Biden. Let's <laughs> let, have them in, a, in, in transparency. Let us know if there are any billionaires or millionaires among them so that we can judge whether or not she really meant what she said when she said those things earlier. I'll tell you, it's interesting to me. I don't know who, whether the Biden campaign put it out or Elizabeth Warren put it out, but last week I thought it was interesting that somebody said, oh, Elizabeth Warren and Joe Biden talk every week. We've already seen him begin to trim his sails and move left. He's endorsed, you know, not Medicare for all, but moving towards Medicare for all. And he, he explicitly said, you know, Elizabeth, with her criticisms of what I did on that 2005 uh, bankruptcy bill. She was right, and and I would if if I, if I could become president, I'm gonna I'm gonna act on her recommendations about undoing what I did in 2005. I thought that was an interesting move. Absolutely. Well, Carl Rove, you were the architect of two successful runs for the White House. Uh, yeah, you know what you're talking about. We appreciate your time uh, on this Memorial Day weekend. Thank you, sir. Well, and, 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 and Pete, I'd be remiss if I didn't say I'm grateful for your service to our country. God bless you, it, sir. Thank you very much. We think of all those today. We appreciate.